Hey everybody, this is Ryan Mallory. What are we doing here in the stock market? Are we selling everything that we got? Are we going all short? Are we starting to buy more? Are we buying the dip? That's the big question here because eight of the last 10 Fridays, the market has been down and significantly down on those Fridays. And four out of the last six days, the stock market's been down. We're starting to see bigger declines in what we're seeing with the rallies. So should we be panicking at this point? Should you be getting scared? Should you say, all right, I'm done. I'm cashing my gains. I'm getting out and I'm moving on to the short side of the trade, or I'm just going on to the sidelines with just cash. Right now, the stock market is experiencing its longest period of economic expansion ever. The US economy is thriving. Is that coming to an end? I don't know, but guess what? We're definitely closer to the end than we are to the beginning. It's not likely this is gonna go on forever. In fact, it won't go on forever. We have the Federal Reserve. They're doing their quantitative easing or what they call not QE4. It's a bunch of bogus nonsense. They shouldn't be doing that. That's something that you reserve for a recession or when times get really bad. You shouldn't really be doing that then if you're a believer in free markets. I don't believe in any of it. Let the chips fall where they must. It's not a good thing. We're cutting interest rates at all time highs. We have an inverted yield curve coronavirus what's going on right but yet the market still isn't that far off of all-time highs so do we get greedy here do we buy the dip do we go ahead and put our cash on the sidelines it's not that easy of an answer i'm going to tell you why let's get into the s p 500 here for the most part this trend line is in great shape it has not broken this rising channel off of the october lows now i'm talking about this white line here i get that i have a lot of lines on these charts but Hey, that's what technical analysis is, man. You're, you're constantly looking for support, you're constantly looking for resistance, where the stock price might bottom out at and where it might bounce. So right here, we got two days of hard declines. We're quickly approaching this support level here. If we were to sell off again, like we did at Monday, we would probably be testing this support level at around 20, 32.86. That's a key support level here. If we bounce, all is good. If we don't, then we're probably going a little bit lower, may even see most of our November and December gains quickly evaporate with a pullback maybe as low as 3100 but other things have to happen before we get to that point that's a significant sell-off that's almost 10 percent beyond just this trend line it needs to break below the january 31st lows if it doesn't do that then the bears have no case here if it does that then you have a lower low in place it, you can see here on the trend line you have a series of higher highs and higher lows so higher low higher low higher low so far, we may have a higher low here. We don't know yet until it bounces. On the flip side, you have higher highs all over the place here. See, the price keeps making higher highs than the previous highs. It just keeps going higher. But you can start seeing where this trend line is getting a little bit tired. It's just not as strong as it was back in the beginning of the rally. You're, you're not seeing as big of moves to the upside. That's a little bit of a concern. The sell-offs, especially on Fridays of what we've seen, are much more significant than any of the rallies that we're, we're seeing, unless it's a rally off of the, the lows of a previous sell-off. So if it doesn't break this lower high, then the market has still a, a rally in place. On the NASDAQ, you can see we've had this rising resistance level that has held for the entire rally. Since the October lows, this resistance level, this big thick yellow line has held the entire time. And finally, it's showing some kickback where the price is selling off. Down over 200 points on the NASDAQ in just one day alone, that's something to take notice of. So where do we go? Well, we have this rising trend line, this red line right here, that it's close to testing here, and that's a good chance that it'll test it on Monday. If it does and it breaks, then the next price level becomes the, once again, the January 31st lows. If those break, then you have a lower low in place. That's where you should get nervous about this market. And then underneath that, you have two more support levels, one right here, and then another one right there. That's the NASDAQ, S&P. They're kind of similar in their charts. They're similar in their support levels, not the same price numbers per se, but in terms of how the charts graph, they're very similar. Now this T2108, this is a favorite indicator of mine. It measures the percentage of stocks that are trading below their 40 day moving average. What is a 40 day moving average? It's the average price of a stock over the last 40 days. And this indicator measures what percentage of stocks are trading above their average price in the last 40 days. Look at this, down six and a half percent. For a market that's down over 1% today, it's not a huge move, still a significant one. But what's the bigger issue here is that the market's not that far off of all time highs, yet 48% of stocks are trading above their 40 day moving average. That's not a lot. That means more than half are trading below the average price of the last 40 days. Not a good sign for the stock market. Also, you have small caps that have been rallying good from October, November, December, and January, but late January, it started to sell off and it hasn't quite recovered. Not like the large caps, which are continuing to make new all-time highs until the, this past week, 
Small caps have struggled to get back to where they once were. Small caps are usually a good sign of, of how much risk tolerance that the that traders and investors have. You can see people are shying away from the small caps. They're gearing more towards the large caps. And because the T2108 that I just showed you in the previous chart shows that not all the stocks are participating in this latest rendition of the market rally off of those January lows, it also means that you have a lot of big companies like Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, your bigger companies that are participating in the rally, but a lot of your smaller companies are not. So it's a rally of few companies while a lot of companies are just on the sidelines and not participating. Another thing that gets me kind of nervous is how many new people are coming into the market right now. I'm inundated all the time with emails and, and people talking to me and asking me what are my thoughts on the market and they're, they're feeling like they're missing out on something and they want to get in and that's great. I, I love that. I really do. I encourage people to get into the stock market. In fact, what usually gets us all into a stock market at one point or another is a bull market rally and the fear that we're missing out on something. Okay. Nobody usually wants to say, Hey, I want to start trading because the market's been down 30% this year. And most people aren't like that. It's a, it's a good approach to have, but most people aren't like that. Instead, people get in because they feel like they're missing out on something and they want to get into it. And what usually happens is that's usually around a, a time a market likes to peak or get very volatile. And they start having maybe a couple of good trades here and there because the euphoria keeps the market going. But then Reality sets in and all of a sudden they start taking on losses and are not really prepared for it. They don't know how to manage the risk and it becomes a very bad taste in their mouth. I've enjoyed the market over the last couple months. It's almost too easy. Okay. And I get nervous just as a, as a seasoned trader who's been doing this for many, many years. I get nervous when it gets this easy because 99% of the time it's not this easy. So I do get nervous because usually when it gets this easy, usually there's a big market correction. Just like in January 2018, the market was going up like 7% in one month and it just looked like it was way too easy then. You had February and you gave up all the gains and more. It was an ugly month. But I still encourage new people to get involved in the stock market, to get involved in the share planner trading block because with the share planner trading block, you're going to learn how to manage risk. You're going to trade both sides of the market. If the market's going down, you're going you're gonna to be shorting more stocks. If the market's going up, you're going to be long on more stocks. So here's the question. And this is why you're probably watching the video. Do you get all in on the stock market right now to the long side? Do you buy the BTFD, the buy the dip? I'm not going to say the other word because I don't want to be censored. Or do you sell everything and you stuff your cash under the mattress and just get out of the market? Or do you get net short on the market and start adding positions to the short side and get you know crazy bearish on this market? Well, it's not an all or nothing answer. That's not how it works. Here's your answer. As the market goes up, you should be taking profits gradually. If the stocks start getting a little bit overstretched, you start taking some profits off the table. As the market starts to pull back some, be willing to add short positions. You don't have to go completely net short, but start adding them. So I've been adding short positions. I have been in UPS for a couple weeks now. And you know what? Until today, it wasn't that great of a trade. In fact, I thought yesterday I was going to get stopped out of it, but it didn't. that didn't happen. You can see here, it's got a bearish uh, flag that's been working and now it's breaking down. That's good. That's what we want. That's why I bought it a couple of weeks ago as a hedge against this kind of a market. Today, I got into Disney because why? It's got this triangle pattern here. It's breaking below a trend line in the short term. I don't know for sure if it's going to go down. I hope actually the market keeps going up because I'm still tilted to the long side. But getting in and getting out of the market isn't about going all long or all short at the same time. You don't want to do that. You want to add more short positions as the market starts showing more weakness and then add more long positions as the market's showing more strength. Yes, you can buy the dip and everything, and that's great. I I did that yesterday. I've done a little bit of that today, just in case we do go back up. But overall, you start have to have, having to hedge your bets when the market starts breaking key support levels and show greater signs of weakness that, okay, maybe this isn't just going to be an automatic market rally this time. I need to go ahead and trim some long positions, maybe add some short positions. And then over time, if the market just turns into a sideways consolidation uh, period where the market's just going up, down, up, down, up, down, then you have a balanced portfolio of longs and shorts that you can profit on each side of based on how the pendulum is swinging each and every day. If the market goes way south, like what we saw in quarter four of 2018, then you're going to have more of a short exposure over time and you're gonna be able to profit from that whole sell off. I didn't sell, when, when the market sold off in 2018, I didn't profit off of it initially, but it was adding more and more short positions as, as the stock market continued to sell off, those short positions became more and more valuable. So let the market dictate how long and how short you get. 
Today, yes, it's a, it's a heavy sell-off, but it doesn't necessarily mean you get completely short on this market. In the same case, you don't go and buy all, all your stocks that you just got stopped out of and hoping that buying the dip is the right way to go. You have to do things in gradual increments.